Good morning, Comic-Con. Let's make some noise. Oh, welcome to Sunday, Rhode Island Comic-Con. Has your weekend been going well so far? Is everybody getting, getting to see the people they want to see, do the things they want to do? Yeah, yeah? yeah. All right, been having fun? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. We're glad to hear that. We worked so hard to make sure this works for you, and after a two-year hiatus, we are so glad to be back. Um, how many people like The Walking Dead? There's some show that gets a little play. Yeah, got some hands up. All right, well, you're in the right place then. I'm going to bring up your moderator, ladies and gentlemen, from Movers and Shakers Unlimited, Mr. Brandon Troy. Let's give it, let's give it up for Brandon. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, thank you. What's up, guys? Day three of Rhode Island Comic Con. How are you guys doing? Oh, my gosh, that's weak. Come on, guys. Day three. How are you guys doing? All right, so just as Michael was saying, I'm sure if you are here today that you guys are fans of zombies. Of course, you're also fans of AMC's The Walking Dead, so I will not keep you waiting. I want to bring out one of the OGs of The Walking Dead, Mr. Chandler Riggs. Give him a round of applause. Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, Chandler, Chandler, uh, uh, welcome to Rhode Island Comic Con. You know, how has the weekend been, man? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, I love coming to these conventions, getting to meet you guys, and uh, yeah, it's just great. I love it. All right, awesome. So just, just uh, take me back, man. You know, when did the, the acting bug, so to speak, uh, hit you? I was four, actually. Yeah, I was, um, my parents had to bring me to rehearsals from time to time for their, like, community theater shows. And I just really wanted to be on stage for some reason. I don't know why. But um, yeah, I started doing like some church plays here and there, some stuff in my school, and just kind of went from there, snowballed into The Walking Dead. All right, that's a great segue. So how did that come, come about? And you know, how extensive was that process from auditioning to booking? I'm sure it was pretty extensive. Yeah, well, uh, fortunately for me, they were casting locally. So I'm from Atlanta originally. And they, yeah, it was just another random audition that I had gotten, like I do a million auditions. And yeah, I sent in a tape. I sent in another tape, and then I went in to read in front of the directors and producers. So it was literally just like any other project. I just got really lucky that they were casting locally. It was great. Nice, nice, nice. So uh, I'll address the elephant in the room. I'm assuming everyone here is caught up. So uh, your character bit the bullet, you know, um, uh, didn't uh, survive. So, you know, with that being said, thinking back to that time of of uh, you know, that moment and learning about you know, the character's fate. Can you, you know, talk a bit about what that process you know, was like of learning you know, of, the, of, of his fate? Yeah, so it was, we were doing rehearsals for episode six of, of season eight, and it, it, we were rehearsing the scene where Carl like, you know, falls down and it actually happens, he gets bit. And we were, we were doing the rehearsals and I, I was trying to figure out I was like, I was talking to the guy who played Sadiq, Avi, and I was like, hey man, so, and it was like his third day at, at like, on set. I'm like, hey man, so why do I, why do you think I like fall over and I'm, and then I get all like, you know, I'm all weird when I get back up. And he's like, I don't know, you should ask the writer though, he's right there. So I go and ask the writer and he just kind of shrugged. And uh, after that I had a meeting with one of, the, one of the showrunners and he told me that, yeah, Carl was, was gonna die. That was it. So. Yeah, I had about two months from that point to kind of um, figure out what I was going to do with my life after that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, you know, with, with that in mind, you know, do you, do you still keep track of, you know, the goings on of uh, your siblings and what, what they're up to on the show and, and still keeping, keeping in touch with everybody? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like it's kind of disappointing if, like, because you guys come up to me all the time and ask me if I still watch the show, and it's like... It's really disappointing if I say no. So I try to keep up with the show and I try to, you know, keep watching it and everything. So I'm up through season, I haven't seen season 10 yet, but um, I like to binge it all. So I've been waiting to, to watch it, but yeah, yeah. Cool beans. So I will ask one last question and then I'll open it out to you guys. Um, I understand, you know, over the course of, you know, doing The Walking Dead that 
you also, uh, at some point, you know, auditioned to be Peter Parker for the MCU. So, you know, maybe in an alternate universe, you know, you could have been, a, what, I guess at this point, a, a variant, a Peter Parker variant, a Spider-Man variant. Um, uh, so with that in mind, you know, obviously we, we know what happened now, but, you know, Feige always circles back to, to folks. And if, if that happened, do you have any thoughts on maybe someone that hasn't been seen in the MCU at this point that maybe you'd be interested in doing? Oh man, I feel like they've done like everything in in <laughs> that's anything Marvel they've put on the on the screen. So I really don't know. But um, you mean I, I mean it's 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 crazy because I audition for like everything and I compete with so many other people for so many roles and Spider-Man was just kind of one of those, just another audition, you know, but actually one of the other actors that got really close to getting it was the guy who played Henry in season nine. I'm, I, he's, he's one of my friends in real life, so he, it was down to like him and Tom Holland for the role of Spider-Man. And, uh, but now he's in Mrs. Marvel and he's killing it. So it's, uh, it's crazy how like intertwined this whole, this whole world is and everything. But to answer your question, actually, um, I don't know. I, I, it's not really MC, <laughs> not really Marvel, but I've always loved The Flash. The Flash is like my favorite superhero. He's awesome. And uh, get it, like, it, would, it would be insane to play a version of, of Barry Allen at some point or Wally West. Nice, nice. I'll put my head in the ring. I'll say Nova, but that's just me. But uh, with that being said, guys, I'll open it out to you. Do we have any questions here? And uh, we do have some mics here if you wanted to come up to uh, uh, the mics. Who would like to go first? Yes. So when you're Can we lower it for <laughs> Thank you. When you auditioned for The Walking Dead, did you know about the comics or how you read the comics. Yeah, so when I got the audition for the show, I took a look at the comics, and I don't think my parents read them beforehand, because <laughs> I was like 10. <laughs> so a little, a little graphic for a 10-year-old. But um, yeah, I, I read the comics and got up to date, and I instantly like fell in love with them and read through all of them and stayed up to date. And I remember, actually, we were filming season two, and it was when the issue came out with my character losing his eye, and I was like, they just killed Carl, <laughs> and I was sitting there on set, like, freaking out, because I'm like, I'm gonna die, what the, and, uh, but then, you know, he lived, and so, it was fine, but, yeah, it was, it was really cool, like, getting to be a fan of the comics, and, like, see how we were gonna do things on the TV show, and the differences and similarities, and uh, Tom Payne, actually, the guy who played Jesus, he's also a fan of the comics. So when he, was, he got onto the show, I, him and I would like go back and forth, like freaking out about how like, oh, we're going to do this. This is so sick. And this is going to look like this. Oh, it's going to be so cool. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank so you. I try to stay up to date with it. And then, and then I love how, how it ended. Have you have any guys were here read the comics, read the ending? Yeah, it's, a, it's such a great ending to like, oh man, I just remember reading the, the last issue. It was in like an airport. And uh, I had, like, tears were streaming down my face. I was like, oh, oh, this is how it ends. Oh, it's so sad. But yeah, it was good. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks thank for your you. question. Hi. Hello. My name is Becca. So um, this is more for you in general, not necessarily The Walking Dead, but you kind of, you obviously you grew up, you started at 10, you did eight years on The Walking Dead. So what are you doing to establish yourself now as an adult actor? You're obviously not a kid anymore, so you, you kind of want to be, there's always that transition for actors when they start as a kid and then they go into adulthood. So what are you doing to establish yourself as an adult actor and what are different types of genre outside of horror that you would be interested in pursuing? Well, the, the first thing that I did when I, the episode aired of my character being off the show, I cut my hair because I was like, that is hopefully going to help me not be typecasted. And uh, yeah, it, it, right off the bat, I landed a, a role on another TV show called A Million Little Things that I got to do and it was incredible. It was so much fun. And it was the first time that I got to be on a set where they, um, I wouldn't say treated, didn't treat me like a kid, but I was seen as an adult on the set because I didn't have like my dad with me there, and and it was uh, it was so much fun because I got to play a role that 
went after like issues that people deal with on like a regular basis, like depression and anxiety. And it was so, so cool to be able to go to work every day knowing that what I was going to do is going to impact people in some way. And it was just such an incredible experience and a feeling that I chase after like all the time. Every audition that I look at, I you know, try to figure out a way how it's going to impact people, positive or negative. So it's um, that's kind of been my thing is is trying to figure out how to how to tell a story that impacts people. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, um, do you think you deserve it a better death in The Walking Dead? You know, when I first got or well when I when I first heard that Carl was um, was gonna die, <laughs> Scott the the showrunner he didn't explain it very well. He was like, yeah, so he's gonna. Uh, crawl down to the sewer and die. And I was like, what the <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's like so, that's like the lamest death ever. But then I, I read the script for the actual, um, you know, episode eight, and, <laughs> and then I saw all the explosions and gunfire, and I was like, all right, this is cool. This is cool. It's exactly like, I wanted Carl to go out with like, you know, explosions and gunfire, and so I got all that. It was great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. I'm gonna answer the question here. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Um, so you've worked with a lot of people who played antagonistic characters on the show. Who was your favorite antagonist to be, you know, part of? And um, are there any of those actors like who out of all of them do you hope to work with in the future? Oh man, everyone, everyone on that show is so so incredible. I mean. Uh, not just antagonist, but like every actor, every character that we've had on the show, it's been it's been incredible. But um, I loved Shane so much. Like especially going back and rewatching the show a few years ago, it made me realize like how cool of a character Shane was. Like to you know go from a protagonist character to an antagonist in the span of like you know, six episodes. It's so, so cool and something that you don't see very often on television today. So I, um, I loved Shane. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. I loved having him. Uh, John Brenthal is an incredible actor and I love seeing him do other stuff from, from like, you know, from here on. It's been so, so awesome. So yeah, Shane's definitely my favorite antagonist. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, what was your first initial reaction when, um, Negan was gonna hit you over the head with the bat, and then um, the King's Tiger saved you. Well, I, 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 it, when I was reading the script, I knew that Carl wasn't gonna die there because they didn't like. I didn't get the phone call, so <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't worried. But actually, the first episode of that season, the episode where you know, obviously Glenn and, and Abraham die. Yeah. I I was reading it, and I was getting to the point where. Negan was telling Rick to chop off Carl's hand, and I was like, I was going through it like, oh my God, they're gonna chop off my hand. They're gonna, they're, he's actually gonna chop off my arm. They didn't tell me they're gonna chop off my arm, and then he didn't chop off my arm, and it was fine. But I was still like freaking out because I was worried that they were gonna chop off my arm, and Carl wasn't wasn't gonna have an arm, and I was like, man, I lose an eye, I lose an arm, what the hell? But yeah, yeah, no, it was fine. I was mostly shocked about that because um. After the, those two died, and then you got was gonna get your arm chopped off. It was kind of surprising, and I probably like shed the most tears on that over anything. So yeah, yeah, it was it was it was rough. It was yeah. very rough, especially filming that man. It, it was like because we we shot you know a good portion of it six months prior at the end of season six, and God, it, it felt like when we came back in season seven. It, it just felt like it just never ended. It felt like that just that scene was just going on forever, and our knees yeah. were so tired because you're kneeling on gravel for like ten hours, and it hurts. It is not fun, but yeah, it was it was it was pretty brutal to film. All right, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Hi. So I was wondering now that you've joined the ranks of characters that have gotten killed off, um, who? <laughs> Throughout the entire series, did you think had the coolest death scene? Like your favorite death scene from the oh, whole show? Man. That is a great question. <laughs> Thank you. Oh man. I haven't even thought about that. I've never gotten that question before. <laughs> wow. Um 
Herschel? Herschel had a great death. Oh, Herschel. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a, it was really, really well done. Um, but man, I want to say Shane again. Yeah, I keep on circling back to, uh, I just, I love John Brenton, I love Shane, he's great. But like, it's just such a, like, an intense moment of like, you know that they're not going to kill off the main character, but like, at the same time, they've killed off so many other, like, really big characters up to that point, so you're like, you really don't know what is going to happen, and you don't know how he's going to get out of that situation, like, Rick is going to get out of that situation, and it's like a, it's a, it's a great, like, stalemate, and... Oh, just that, that whole scene is just so insane, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. It was so cool. So, yeah, yeah, definitely Shane's death. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Um, this I isn't... love the hat. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Um, this isn't really a Walking Dead question, but a million little things. I just recently watched the show. Do you think you're going to come back to it? Because I feel like you and Lizzie Green's character never really made up, and I want to see where that goes. Yeah, we kept, um, it, it was, uh, the idea was kind of floating. There was a couple of storylines that were floating around that I was told we're going to get circled back to, but they ended up, it ended up just never fitting in quite properly. So um, I haven't heard anything about coming back to the show. I would love to. I had a great time working on that set. And uh, I loved everyone on there, working with everyone on there. It was great. So hopefully I'll be back at some point. But I don't know. We'll see. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hey, How hello. did you feel about filming Lori's death? That whole episode with Lori and then Rick. So that whole, that whole sequence took like two days for us to shoot and it was over my 13th birthday so it was like <laughs> it was like the worst birthday ever having to kill my character's mom like it was not fun at all it was um, it was really really rough because we just it was just so much like so much crying and so much like oh man like it's it's it, it takes a toll on on someone and let alone a, a 12 13 year old you know so it's it was um it was it was really rough it was I mean, it was hard to say goodbye to sarah because she was such a um just an amazing person to have on set and always looking out for me and so having her leave was it was really rough and especially because because i read the comics i knew that she wasn't supposed to die until like way later so I uh, I was not expecting her character to go at all. It was pretty sad, but um, but it ended up being like a a great episode and really well done. So you know it's hard to like be mad at it or something yeah. when it ended up being like a a great a great moment in in television. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of course. And then all of course all the memes that came out of it too with the, the <laughs> you know Rick on his knees and the all the dad jokes that originate from that one frame. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. All right, we have a, another question. Don't be shy, we got. All right, here we go. Are you um, familiar with the bad lip reading of Karl Papa? I am very aware. <laughs> yes. I am very, what are your, very aware. What are your thoughts on that? It's, um, when the first one came out with like the governor and, and all, all that, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I went around showing everyone on set. And I, th I thought it was just, it was so funny. And then they came out with one with me. And I was freaking out. I was like, they made one with me. A song about me. That's so cool. Since, since that it's came so out, cool. Since that came out, my daughter and I still go back and forth with the Lejiggy Jar 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 Do. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Um, another, another thought was um, when you first started doing that character, did you, did you have nightmares of zombies? <laughs> See, my, uh, you know, my job as an actor is to make it look scary, look mm. like I was terrified, yeah. but it's actually not scary. Right. It's like, I mean, it's like a convention. Like, people are walking around in costumes. The normal people, like, they're eating food through yeah. their, like, crazy masks, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, when they say cut, you know, they'll just go off to the side and just kind of do their thing. And just normal people just dressed up in crazy makeup. Right, so right. it's, um, you know, we, we make it look really scary. We make it look like we're scared because that's our job. That's what we do. 
So I'm glad you asked that because that means we did our job. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, you were obviously fairly young when you started the show. So between takes, who would you hang out with? What would you do? Where would they bring you? Because that's kind of not really something they want to expose a little child to like that early. Yeah. Um, actually, the, uh, the woman who played Tara on, on The Walking Dead, she was, because I didn't have that many people like super close to my age for a while on that set, and uh, she was pretty close to my age, like ish. She was in her 20s, but um, you know, still just someone that I could like talk to and hang out with that wasn't like over 40. So it was, it was, uh, it was fun, and we would like play pranks on each other on set. And so one of the ones was, uh, I think it's from something, but I, I'm not sure, but. Uh, what what we would do is we would go up up behind each other and we'd pinch each other's shoulders and whisper like Vulcan in each other's ears. And so if that happened, you know, the other one had to like just drop to their knees. But it got so bad that it got to the point where we started doing it while we're rolling. So <laughs> we were in the middle of the scene and it, I think it was like when we were walking up to Alexandria or something and so we all like land on our marks and and then I feel I, I feel a lot of put her hand on my shoulder and just whisper Falcon. And I'm like, you mother. <laughs> and I have to do it. I have to drop to my knees. And I got a very stern glare from like two or three of the producers <laughs> after that take and was told to never do that again. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. And we'd crack each other up like, oh God, it'd be so bad. Because I, I see, I, don't, I, I never worked in comedy before. So I'm not good at holding in like laughter or like not breaking character, right? So if something like, even remotely funny happens and like while I'm on camera, it's over. I'm done. And once like you start getting into like laughing and getting into a laughing fit, it is so hard to break out of it. So we would we would be in the middle of the scene and like one of us would start laughing. I'm like, what are you laughing at? Now I'm laughing. Now the whole scene's messed up and we can't shoot for like four hours now. Yeah, it was rough. But I, I had a lot of fun with everyone on that set. It's it was such a great like family, you know, and uh, yeah, it was just so much fun. It was great. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Kind of a long-winded answer. Sorry about that. No, nah, you're good, man. So uh, while we wait, if we have another question, I'll, I'll hop in really quick. I guess question that actually jumps off the last one that we had just now is, you know, with that character there, you know, quite a few moments where you are pretty active in terms of like sequences that happen. Um, what can you, can you talk a bit about you know that process and perhaps some things that they allowed you to do you know at at that age and other things they wouldn't allow you to do you know just for safety reasons that type of thing like like stunt wise is that what you're talking yeah, about yeah 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 so for stunts they always had a stunt double for me and um, I think for the first few years it was like a 30 year old woman who was my stunt double <laughs> and um, yeah it was most of the, most of the stunts that I did weren't like super intense stunts, so I would always just kind of go up to the AD and uh, the assistant director and just be like, hey man, do we really need a, a stunt double for this? I'm just like falling over. <laughs> like, I, I can fall over, it's fine. And yeah, most of the stunts were, were really not super intense. However, um, they do have moderately strict uh, labor laws for firearms for, for kids. So one of the things, which makes sense, but one of the things that they have for kids on set is that they can't like touch or hold a firearm or anything on set until they're 14. And so up until that point, I was using either like a rubber gun or it was like a, it was a, it was a gun, but it was like plugged and it was completely inoperable. And so on the night of my 14th birthday, they had scheduled uh, a scene in season four, and it's the scene where all of the, the walkers are, you know, they breach the fence at the prison, and they're coming in, and it's like Rick and Carl in the courtyard, and they're like, they have machine guns, there's Mona all down, right? So they scheduled that scene on, on my birthday, and I'm like, are they gonna have me actually shoot an M16? And I, and I was like, 13 year old me was like, oh, this is gonna be so sick. This is gonna be just like in Call of Duty. It's gonna be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and so I, uh, I get on set and it's like my, it's the, it's the night before my birthday, it's the day before my birthday. 
and so we're shooting all of the other pieces to that scene, um, except for the, the actual part where we pick up our guns and we start firing. And it's like 11 o'clock, and so uh, from then on, we're just kind of sitting around waiting until midnight and for like me to actually be able to pick up a gun and shoot. And so we're just sitting around and waiting, and, uh, and then it starts getting close to the time, and so then everyone starts counting down, and like, five, four, and it hits zero, and everyone cheers, and then Andy, the guy who plays Rick, he comes over with, and he knights me with a machine gun, <laughs> and he's like, give this man some bullets, <laughs> and then we went just like blasting into the night for hours, and we came back, again, came back again the next day and did it again. It was great. It was so cool, and I felt so awesome, like, sh like blasting a gun and then like dropping the mag and like grabbing it out of my back pocket, slapping it in, and like keep going. If I felt so cool, that was the coolest I've ever felt. I was 14. So I, nice, yeah. very nice, very yeah. nice. All right, do we have a, another question out there? All right, cool. All right, Loki, come on. Okay, so if you read all the comics, knowing uh, Carl's role in the Whisperer plotline, were you a little disappointed you didn't get to do that, or do you think you aged out maybe because he's making some dumb decisions in that <laughs> plotline? Yeah, I was pretty bummed out that I wasn't going to get to do all that stuff because you know I was I was a fan of the comics, but. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the guy that plays Henry, I'm, I'm friends with him in real life, so getting to see him, like he's in my acting class and we play like Battlefield together, so it's, you know, we're, we're friends. But getting to see him like step into that role and seeing him get to like do all that cool stuff, I, I was really happy with it. And I was really happy with the way he did it and everything. I think he definitely did Comic Carl justice for all that, so I, um, I, was, I was pretty happy for him. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hi, it's the last question for me. Um, so I'm an aspiring actress. I love going to auditions. I love all that. What is one thing people and other actors don't tell you about the acting industry? Like, what's something that's just not really mentioned? <laughs> well, it's um, <clears throat> it's really. I, I mean, as you know, if you're if you're an actress, it's it's not easy at all. You face a lot of rejection, and it's um, it's it's uh, yeah, it's a lot. So to give you guys perspective, like in the last three years, I've done I've auditioned for like everything, for like guest stars, series regulars, for like all these different Netflix shows, Hulu, like all these different networks, and I've gotten one callback in the last three years. So it is insanely difficult to uh, to book anything for any actor that like you think is you know established or um, or like I was like oh yeah they don't have to they don't have to do all that I'm sure but no they have to go and audition and and do the same process as everyone else and it's hard and it's um, and it's a really long tedious process so the biggest advice that I can give to anybody is to that's looking into getting into acting is to stay persistent because something will come along eventually and you'll book it and it's gonna feel great and then you'll probably get another dry spell for another, like a few years, <laughs> but um, but that's just that's the job. And that's how it goes. So you said I have to be prepared to face the rejection. Thank Peaks you. Yeah. Um, what was the hardest scene that you had to film? Honestly, Question. probably my aside from the scene of of Lori's death, which I talked about a bit earlier. It was um, it's probably the my last scene because you know. Obviously, it, it wasn't my decision to leave, and I didn't. I, I loved being on the show, and it was uh, it was it was really tough. So, yeah, and I, I remember my last day of shooting. We uh, it was it was one of the scenes in the tunnel. I think it was like I can't remember what it was, but it was it was really. Um, it was it was all just so sad for like those those two weeks just saying goodbye to everyone for like every day I like, I had another monologue about saying goodbye it was just so depressing and the last day they said cut and check the gates and I was like all right that's it and so I got up and I walked out of the set that we because it, it was a tunnel but it was like on a sound stage in like a warehouse so I walked out of the like the set still in like the warehouse and the entire cast and crew, they had eye patches over their, over their faces, and they were all clapping and cheering for me. And 
and uh, and I just like broke down, and I was like, man, I had this whole speech prepared and everything, and all I could all I could get out was this was really cool. That's all I could say. <laughs> I couldn't, like, I had, I practiced it in front of a mirror that day of, like, what I wanted to say and, like, who I wanted to thank, but that's all I could say because I was a, just a crying mess, and, uh, yeah, it was, that, that was definitely the hardest, hardest, um, hardest thing to shoot because it was just, yeah, it was great, and it was my whole childhood. Like, I started on that show when I was 10, and I was 18 when I finished, so it was most of my, like, memorable life was being on that show, so saying goodbye was really hard, but, you know, that's how it goes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. With so many serious scenes and deaths and everything, what are some of the things that you or other cast members did behind the scenes to break the hu make humor or pull pranks or to lighten the mood? Well, I know Andy and Norman, they played a lot of pranks on each other from time to time. I know they, <laughs> one of the things that Norman did, he took, it was, it was a really, really hot day. It was like, uh, definitely in the in the hundreds. It was like the middle of the summer in in Georgia. We were in the woods all day shooting, and Norman had went into Andy's car, and with like a bunch of glitter, and just filled his AC vents with glitter, and just every single one. And Isn't so. Is real of that? I think I've. You probably yeah. There's videos of it okay. yeah. And so. <laughs> You know, we wrap for the day, and we we get back to uh, we get back to base camp. Andy gets in his car to get going. We're all you know we all we all go into hair and makeup to get all like all of the dirt like wiped off of us, and then we get out get out and go get in our cars. And then Andy goes and sits in his car. He turns it on and blasts the AC because it's so hot. And then his car is it's just <laughs> glitter everywhere and he's so he's super sweaty so it all it's all stuck to him and everything and he's just covered in glitter and he's like and and he just he looks up at Norman who's who's filming him and he just like the you, you guys there's a there's a couple of scenes where you see Aunt, like Rick like look at the camera or like look you know just like the, just the, the stare the Rick stare and that's what he looked that's how he looked at Norman yeah and so about a month later, we were at San Diego Comic Con, and he was telling all of us. He was like, he was like, this is. He, he, he was like, he was so proud of this plan that he he had concocted, and he's like, all right, so I have a, I have, I'm gonna have a handful of glitter, right, and I'm gonna sit down on stage on panel at San Diego Comic Con, and then I'm gonna keep it in my hand the whole time, and then when he sits down, I'm gonna blow it in his face. <laughs> it's gonna be great, and we're like, okay, bud, you could have, you could have made. Could have done something a little bit cooler, but all right, all right. And so we're we're at the panel, and we all sit down. And Andy, he's like, he's got this like smirk on his face, like, oh, I'm gonna get him. And he has his hand full of glitter, and Norman's sitting there, and he brings up his hand to blow it, but he doesn't. It, the end of his hand is cupped, <laughs> so he blows it, and then it blows all right back into his face, <laughs> and it covers his entire face. And then he just looks out with just a dead stare on his face. <laughs> and then Norman's just dying laughing next to him. And yeah, it was pretty funny. So they, they, would, they would pull pranks on each other from time to time. There was actually, there was another time. So, sorry, I know this is very long-winded. I apologize. But uh, one story that doesn't get told as much is, um, so John Brenthal, don't, don't, don't tell, don't like make this widespread, but he's terrified of crickets for some reason. He's absolutely terrified. So yeah, it was another similar kind of scenario. One day after a super long, hot, sweaty day in Georgia, um, Norman fills his entire trailer with crickets. So you know, he comes back and he's like, we're all dead tired because it's like 14 hours of work. And he gets to his trailer, he opens it up, and sees the the mound. It just it's filled with crickets, right? He just closes it, <laughs> goes in his car, and goes home <laughs> with his clothes on and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, they they play a lot of pranks on each other. It's pretty funny. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Yes. Okay, I have two questions, and uh, they're not walking that related. So you said you auditioned for Peter Parker, and Kevin Feige normally calls people back, and you want to work with John. And knowing he's the Punisher, and Marvel's talking about bringing him back, 
Do you think they might put you working with him on that show? Um, prob probably not. <laughs> I, w I wish. I would, love to, I would love to do that. That'd be so much fun. But um, I didn't get very far in the <laughs> audition for Spider-Man. It was just one of, you know, just a one-off audition. And, um, you know, it is what it is. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever be called back for anything Maybe like that. Maybe even like walking in the background. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never know. We'll see. But, um, but I mean, again, I, I audition for so many things. I have one to do this weekend. I did one like last week, another one the week before, all for like, you know, huge productions to like indie films so yeah so that's leading up to my next question I'm an independent filmmaker so I know a lot of the things that you talk about how do you feel about what's going on with like Yahtzee and the whole safety issues it's great it is so so great so for those of you that that, that aren't aware um, the crews on on sets are some of the most hardest working people that I have ever met. They are there, and some of the um, the production assistants, a lot of them are there from like before anyone else has to get there. They're like the first ones in and the last ones out. That's like 16 hours, right? And then you have to commute, like probably an hour drive to and from work, and you're getting paid below minimum wage. And like you don't get enough time to sleep or like eat or socialize or have a normal life. And so what they'll what will happen is that because production schedules are so tight, um, ADs have to schedule out these days. So you get called in at like 4 a.m. on Monday morning to get everything set up and ready to go by the time the sun comes up, and then you know you have to do 12-hour turnaround. So they'll wrap at like probably 5 p.m that day so they can call them in at 5 a.m. the next day and then go until like 6 p.m. that day, 6 a.m. the next day up until like Friday where they'll do you know probably a night shoot where they'll call them in at like 6 p.m. and have them run until 8 a.m. the next day and and that's like on a Saturday they go home sleep for you know the weekend for 24 hours and then come back at 4 a.m. on Monday, and that happens every week. And it's on it's on an it's an insane schedule that it's it's just it's insane. So right now there's um, a whole movement happening, like with like a, there's a strike and everything to try and get productions to expand their schedule a little bit because these networks are making so much money that they can expand their schedules just a bit so these workers can have a life outside of work and so I'm super super happy about the way things are going I'm well I'm not happy with the you know the agreement that got made yeah. so far but it's um it's progress. it's good that progress yeah. is being made exactly so um it's just it's crazy because you know the the crews on the set they a lot of times they work harder than the actors like the actors get we get pampered you know we get we get to sit in the shade and, and get like cooling tents and vans and everything and uh, meanwhile these workers are getting pushed to the bone and so it's it's um it's a really really crazy crazy job for people to to do and work for and um, but I applaud every single one of them. It's they're some of the most hardest working people that I've ever met, and I look up to every single one of them. And so sorry for the tangent that I just went on, but it's just it's it's just Good. it's I, I look up to those people so much, and so I'm uh, I'm really happy that there's something changing for that. All right, thank so you. So thank so you much. for asking about oh, that. Thanks yeah. for your question. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Um, what setting did you enjoy filming the most? Like the prison scenes or Alexandria scenes? Oh man, honestly, I think shooting at the prison was awesome because we <laughs> we finally got a lot of interior scenes, which meant air conditioning <laughs> because man, m the majority of our scenes like from season 1 and season 2 were in the woods, like and it was really hot. We had like bugs crawling all over us the whole time. It was it was it was really hot and really long days. And so getting to work in, on like on a sound stage on interior sets was really cool. And actually, so a cool thing about the prison is that they built that set on top of the sound stages. So we had our sound stages with with like our these big warehouses that they just built all these fake brick walls and everything on top of and put like a you know basketball goal and all this stuff to make it look like an old decrepit prison. And uh since then we've like reused that whole area. That's um 
like just on the other side of those sound stages is the set for the exterior for the sanctuary, which is pretty cool. And then just down that like, so in, if you remember the prison had like that main uh, like dirt road going through the courtyard, just a bit further outside that like those gates is where the big junkyard is in like season seven. And, uh, and if you keep going down that road a bit more into the woods, there's Father Gabriel's church and the same place that we shot all the Negan scenes. And then on the other side of that is where we shot scenes in season two where I got shot. And then a bit further down that road is where the ocean side is. And then a bit further down is where Herschel's farm is. So it's all like right there within like a, a two mile radius. So it's really cool to um, you know, be on the same, same like kind of set all the time. It's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Had his back. I was wondering if I could uh, give you a picture I drew. Yeah, you know, actually, if you come to my table after the panel, I'll be there, and you can come Where by. Is it? Where is it? Uh, it's in the, the, the dunk. That's what you guys call it, right? Yeah. In the dunk. dunk. All right. Yes. Thank you. No problem. All right, guys, we have time for one more question. Who would like to come up? One more. All right. Hi, Chandler. Uh, I was just wondering, a lot of child actors are kind of a hot mess when they get older. Um, but you seem very composed and down to earth. So <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> so I was wondering what you attribute that to. My parents, for sure. Yeah, I got really, really lucky. Both my parents were school teachers before I was on the show. And I, um, yeah, they just... I, 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 just, I was just really lucky to have awesome parents that were super supportive every step of the way, that would bring me to auditions, that would um, push me to like try and uh, just, you know, allow me to like to shoot really high and, and like, you know, to be okay, to be like let down, you know. When I was eight, I actually auditioned and I got really close to being on Broadway. I, I was um, head down to like the last few for being Michael Banks and Mary Poppins. And if I had landed that, I obviously wouldn't have gotten Walking Dead or anything, but my parents were like ready to move to New York and like find teaching jobs in New York and like have me be on Broadway. So I was really lucky to have parents that would be there every step of the way and my dad was able to take early retirement because he taught special ed for like 25 years so he was able to be my studio teacher down on the set for all those years and uh, and now he's back teaching and my mom's doing real estate now so I got really lucky to have yeah just such supportive parents that were um, yeah there with me every step of the way it was great thank you all right yeah, thank, thank you, you guys can we get a round of applause for Chandler Riggs please uh, thank you Thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with me for a bit, guys. I'll be at my table, so come by, say hi, and uh, yeah, thank you guys again. I'll see you guys later.